The next step in learning how to use a trade informed backtest model is learning how to change the entry conditions. Now this is the start of the most technical part of a trade informed backtest model as it is with any type of modeling. This is when we're going to start to use logic and if you've not used it before, if you've not used if statements before, it may be it may take a while to learn them, but really they are easy to understand and very soon you'll be able to make changes and even create your own logical conditions. So the basics of where we start, all trade informed models are only going to have long and short trades because that's all we can do. And the column reference will change, but if you look for trade long, that will always be the column that has the entry conditions for long trades. And if you look for trade short, you will find down here the entry conditions for short trades. Now, the entry logic that we use always starts with the function, the formula equals if. Now, this means we've got an if statement, and these are the basis for logic in most types of programming. We need to find the conditions under which we enter a trade. So we can see in this example here that we have equals k24, we've got an equals if and, and these are very common. And what this means is that all of these conditions separated by a comma must be true before we enter a trade. And long trades are signified by the, the word put in inverted commas, long. And it's as simple as that. And that signifies we've got a visual representation that a long trade has started. And likewise here we would have short and we would again have a visual representation that a short trade has started. So these are the conditions one, two, three that are going to decide whether we have a long trade. And we can just quickly look at them here. So K204 must be greater than L204. And if we look at the common, the columns, the fast EMA must be greater than the slow e EMA. Okay, well that's fairly fairly easy to understand. Our O204, which is the MACD, must be lower than zero. Okay, again, fairly easy to understand. And this final one is something that you will find in almost all trading form spreadsheets, and that it is that this column, the long trade running, the trade running column equals zero. And there's a reason it has to equal zero is because these spreadsheets are set up to trade one position at a time. Now this is not an absolute fixed limit. We can test more positions, but generally speaking, it is a very good idea to start with and maybe even continue with just testing a single position at a time. It is much simpler, much less complexity, and it's a good place to start. So we have this condition to say that there should be no trades running, otherwise we're not going to open a position. So we can see on the very first row here, we're opening a long trade. So I want to change this. I want to Look at how I can make this different. Well, we've got a few different ways to do it. We've got this must be greater than that. Well, an obvious thing to try might be, well, what if this was less than this? So I'm going to use the less than symbol. And we're going to put that as greater than zero and keep everything the same. I'm just going to enter that. Double click here. And we've got a completely different set of long trading conditions. If we go to the results. We can see that it makes quite a difference. Let's isolate the long trades. And we can see that 
surprisingly, it does make a profit, which is probably a result of the market tending to go up during this time period, but it doesn't work as well. So we can see just by making those changes there, we are testing a completely different trading strategy. We might want to add an additional condition. So I'm just going to put in a comma here. And what might we want to add? We might want to say that the close is also lower than, we've got a few different technical indicators here. How about we say that the stochastic percentage D, percent D of the stochastic must be lower than a value, must be lower than 30. Okay, I'm going to copy that down. Now we can say 30, it's a nice value, but I want to have this as a absolute reference, an absolute reference. And if you don't remember what these are, go back and have a look at the spreadsheet skills video. So an absolute reference means that I'll be able to change this data without going through and changing each cell. So I'm going to point it to here, create a relative reference, and I'm going to press F4. And this puts the dollar symbols around the cell reference to make it an absolute reference. I press Enter. Once again, I double click it down. And now I have a new thing that I could put onto my results page. It's an entry condition, so I might put it here. I might label it as stochastic filter. And as I like it to look neat, I might use my format painter to make it look the same as the cells around. Now, if I change this value, it will change the strategy results. The lower I make this, we will find we will get fewer and fewer trades. And the higher I make this, we will get more and more. Okay, so we've got a new conditional. It only took a moment to put it in there. And our if and is now checking for all four of these conditions. If you want to change the short conditions, it works exactly the same. I'm just going to have a look at this because in this case, there are one, two, three, four conditions already set up. So we've got the opposite of what we had in the other, in the for the long trades here. And we're checking to make sure that there's no short trades running, but also we've got this one. Now we have seen this before in the previous video, and this is to make sure that we're not checking the short, the long trades only box. So I can work this back to results D19, and we can see it actually corresponds to this. So if I click here, we will start to get short trades again. Okay, so these are the four conditions. We can add in another stochastic or any of our technical indicators that we like to change the entry conditions.